actually I will go in detail cluster where startup in last third session I did that but I did not explain each and every process so today uh, the first process if you are seeing that any process which actually start the OHASD that is that is Oracle high availability services daemon uh, so that is responsible to starting uh, the uh, all rack process so that is basically monitoring and restarting other oracle cluster where daemons okay and uh, up uh, up through the crsd daemon which in turn manage cluster wide resources so crd is uh, manage the cluster wide resources so when a cluster node boots or cluster where is started on a running cluster where node the init process is start the OHASD that is Oracle High Availability Service Domain. Then OHASD process initiate the startup of the process uh, in the lower or OHASD stack, which I covered already. So the first process is CSSD agent. It will start, then Aura root agent, it will start, then Aura agent, it will start, then CSSD monitor, it will start. So CSSD agent process is started when in turn uh, it starts uh, OCSSD also. So CSSD process discover the voting disk uh, either in ASM or on shared. Okay, so if anybody is asking interview question uh, that which process is uh, discover the voting disk. So you can say that CSSD agent will discover the voting disk. So after discovering the voting disk, uh, it will join the cluster. Uh, and after that, a CSSD agent monitor the cluster and provides IO fencing also. So this is uh, another interview question, which I, which process provides the IO fencing? The answer is CSSD agent. So this service uh, actually earlier known was OCP, uh, sorry, OPROCD, Oracle Process Monitor Daemon, but now it is CSSD agent. So CSSD agent failure uh may, may uh, when 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 uh, this process fails, then Oracle cluster where restarting the node so this is another interview version of what will happen when cssd agent fails then you can say that uh, your cluster will uh, restart the node got it so clear about cssd agent or any question if you have any question please type in the chat room okay <clears throat> then uh, another important process is or uh, root agent this process is basically uh, help the CRSD uh, uh, start and manage resources which is owned by root such as network, uh, grid virtual IP addresses, etc. Okay, so this is the work of Aura root agent. Then third process is Aura agent uh, which is responsible uh, for starting processes that do not need to run as a root. So whatever the process uh, which owners are not root, that processes are started by Aura agent. So Aura agent basically extend cluster layer to support Oracle specific requirement and other resources. This process uh, runs basically uh, fan uh, uh, fan related things uh, so whenever fan occurs or fan event occurs uh, this process run uh, some is call out is script so this process uh, was uh, actually known as rag g uh, in 11.1 but after that its name change so aura rule aura agent name was earlier rag g uh, also so don't be confused uh, when you heard about rag G, okay? And the fourth process is CSSD monitor, and it is responsible for monitoring the uh, OCSSD, okay? OCSSD daemon. So this is 
this is the four process which we start uh, at first level okay so uh, uh, someone called level zero level one level two level three like that and someone called level one level two level three like that okay so please remember so you can remember like in it then ohasd then uh, cssd agent or a root agent or a agent and cssd monitor simple so this is the way you can learn okay then uh, after that second level will start by aura root agent and as you know that uh, aura root agent is responsible for what just now i have said it will manage uh, those resources which is run by root and especially like network okay related process yeah. So if I move to next slide, so this is so aura root agent will start one, two, three, four, five, six process. So aura root agent will start six process. And in that, the first process is OSYSMON. I had said uh, monitoring and operating system metric uh, collection services. So that is managed or monitored by OSYSMON, means system monitor services. So basically, it will send the data to the cluster logger service, that is OLogger. Okay, so if you see, second process is o logger so the cluster logger services receive information from all the node and persist in uh, oracle grid infrastructure management repository database so this is one system monitor service on every node so on every node you have a uh, monitor service and that is managed by osysmon okay and o logger basically help in that so o logger uh, means uh, cluster logger services on only one node in a cluster and another node is chosen by the cluster logger service to house the standby for the master cluster logger service if the master cluster logger service fails the node where I stand by resides take over the master and select a new node for the standby. So the master manages the operating system metric database in CHM uh, repository and interact with the standby to manage a replica of the master operating system metrics database. So this is the work of OLogger. Clear? Then third process is CRSD. So cluster ready service daemon process is the primary program for managing high availability operation in the cluster. So CRSD manage cluster resources based on the configuration information which is stored in OCR to, for each resource. So this includes start, stop, monitor and failover operations. So CRSD process generates events when the status of a resource change uh, or changes. When Oracle Rack is uh, installed, the CRSD process monitor the Oracle database components and automatically restarts from when a failure occurs. So CRSD is responsible for starting the Oracle uh, database components whenever any failure occurs clear and this mon basically monitor and perform io fencing for oracle exa data so another interview question uh, so if anybody is asking about processes to check about your understanding about the processes of rack then uh, they can think that you are good in rack because process plays an important role in oracle uh, rat troubleshooting so that's why i am telling especially about these things so please remember that 
I hope are you in? Means whatever I am telling you are yes, getting it. Okay, thanks. So another is ACFS drivers. So basically, uh, these drivers are loaded uh, when you use ASM Dynamic Volume Manager, that is ADVM, and ASM Cluster File System. When you are using ACFS, then on that time, this process will come into the picture. And then uh, you had uh, OCT SSD. So the cluster time synchronization service process provides time synchronization between the cluster uh, in the absence of NTPD, right? So if NTPD is configured, OCT SSD will run in observer mode. So you need to decide by which process uh, you want to configure or manage cluster time synchronization services. So this is uh, the second level. And then uh, third level they had shown by CRSD process. So CRSD is again uh, started two process. One is ORA root agent and ORA agent. So don't get confused. One ORA root agent and ORA agent is started by OHASD and another ORA root agent and ORA agent is started by CRSD process here. So the, the ORA root agent of CRSD process basically uh, is responsible for doing many things like node VIP, scan VIP, network, GNS. So if you remember, if you want to remember, you can remember that uh, ORA root agent of CRSD process will manage all my network like node IP, uh, scan IP, network, GNS, okay? So node VIP basically is a node application responsible for eliminating uh, response delays, that is TCP out, timeout, uh, to client program requesting a connection to the database. So whenever client trying to connect to a database, there is a TCP timeout value in your database configuration. If suppose connection not happened, then uh, after how many minutes or how many seconds client get to know that this is down and this is not available for connection. So basically that is the work of uh, a node VIP. So each node uh, VIP is assigned an unused IP address. So this is usually done via DHCP, but you can manually assign. So there is initially one node VIP per cluster node at cluster where startup. So when a cluster node become unreachable, the node VIP is failed over to surviving node. But that uh, you need to configure and redirect connection request made to the unreachable node to a surviving node. So this is the work of node VIP. So understand that. What is the work of node VIP? This one. Then you can scan VIP. As I said, scan is single client access name uh, that is started in 11.2. It is, uh, it is uh, uh, when you are using this, so it will eliminate the dependency on a static cluster node name. So this method basically allows nodes to be added or removed from the cluster without affecting the availability of clients to connect to the database. Means pnsnames.ora file is not updated or not required to be updated whenever node is adding or deleting. So that is the benefit we get from the scan um, naming method, okay? In that, if GNS is used in the cluster, then three scan VIP are started on the member node using the IP addresses which you assign uh, by uh, statically or which is get which is getting by DHCP server. If GNS is not used, then scan VIP address for the cluster can be defined in DNS server 
used by the cluster node. So earlier I said that uh, this thing, uh, your your uh, node will be managed by uh, GNS or as well as DNS when you want uh, to configure a network. Okay, and then third process is network, uh, which is required uh, to network resources by the cluster uh, by the cluster are started. And another is GNS. If you are using GNS, then GNS VIP is used to resolve client requests to the cluster. A single GNS VIP for the cluster is started. The IP address is assigned in the GNS server used by the cluster node. Clear? So this is uh, this is three or four process uh, which is started by Aura root agent and Aura root agent by CRSD. Here. Uh, now, uh, Aura agent of CRSD process. So, this will work for ONS, ASM instance, scan listener, node listener, and database instances. Here. So, basically, uh, Aura agent of CRSD process. Uh, is responsible for ONS, that is Oracle Notification Services. Uh, whenever you are using FAN, so in that, whenever events are occur, so this process is basically publish and subscribing services for communicating FAN events. Clear? Yeah. Uh, so this process is started automatically, or do we need to start it manually? No, no, this all process is started automatically when you start the cluster where if any problem occurs uh, between the cluster uh, when 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 you are working, then on that time some process is started automatically and some process you need to start that that we will discuss later on. I'm just telling uh, each and every process work. Okay, and uh, by which process it will start or under which process it will come, right? Okay. okay. So another is ASM instance. As we know that Oracle is uh, ASM instance basically provide the disk management, right? So that's why because ASM is storage and uh, you are using ASM for storage purpose. That's why before starting the database instance, your ASM instance should be mounted. And uh, uh, that provides the disk management for Oracle clusterware and Oracle databases. Oracle ASM instance is started on each cluster node. Okay. And scan listener, basically, if you are using three scan IP, three scan listener will be available uh, where the scan VIP are started from 11G release two and later instances. And this uh, instance register with scan listener only as remote listener. So scan listener will be configured as a remote listener and local listener is configured as a local listener like public ip and vip and node listener is basically if gns is used to resolve client connection request to the cluster so a single gns vip for the cluster is started and the ip address is assigned in the gns server used by the cluster node so basically this is node listener and database instance if the cluster node are supporting for oracle react database the database instance are started so that uh, five things are managed by this aura agent of crsd process yep Ahmed, I apologize. Could you please, could you please tell me that Aura agent and Aura uh, root agent is already started in the first phase, uh, and then again in the cluster ready services, it is starting those processes again. Can you please explain? It's not clear to me. See, as I said, that Aura agent uh, and Aura root agent is started by OHASD, that is lower state, 
and CRSD is started again or a root agent and or agent. Uh, this, that is comes uh, bit, uh, for the work of network and for the work of instances, listeners and ONS. So that is uh, the difference between that. And OHASD or a root agent is responsible for uh, system monitor services of RAC, KCFS drivers and cluster time synchronization services and cluster ready services so that is the work of aura root agent and aura agent you see here so this one so this will work for event related things and gipcd mdnsd evmd asm and gp and pd so if you see previous slide, Aura agent of CRSD is managed for database instances, ASM instances, and listeners, right? But here, OHASD, Aura agent is basically responsible for uh, grid inter-process communication, multicast domain name service, and event management, and ASM basically disk management and GPNPD grid plug and play. So this is the way you can differentiate. And one more information I had covered about One line definition of Aura agent and Aura uh, uh, root agent is basically, I said already, uh, the OHASD Aura uh, root agent is responsible for uh, help the CRSD, right? And start and manage resources owned by root, such as network uh, and grid virtual IP addresses. And Aura agent is responsible for uh, starting the process, which owners are not root, clear? And Aura agent process basically provide the extend support, like uh, like like fan event occurs, then on that time it will come into the picture. So that is the work of. OHASD or a root agent and or a agent. Okay, it's a bit clear now. It's a bit clear. Or a root agent is responsible for starting the root owner's processes, and or a yes. agent is responsible for starting the oracle processes, which have which is not yeah, the owner of root. root processes. If you are using grid owner, then it will become grid owner. If you are using oracle, it will be oracle owner. Okay, so that is the one line difference. If anybody is asking what is the work of or a root agent and or a agent. Then you can set like you have said earlier, Ura agent is responsible to start the process which owners are root, and Ura agent is responsible for those process which owners are uh, grid or okay. Clear? Clear. Okay, thank you. So now OHSD Ura agent processes are GIPCD, MDNSD, AVMD and ASM and GPNPD. So grid uh, inter-process communication daemon, if you are using, then GIPCD process will be uh, uh, will be there and that owner will be not the root. So this is the way you can remember, okay? And uh, this process is basically interconnect uh, uh, usage. So uh, if it is enabled, load balancing and high availability across multiple private network and uh, that also known as interconnect so up to uh, how many so that is four please remember that okay so redundant interconnect usage enable load balancing and high availability across uh, multiple private network so that limit is up to four 
and md nsd multi cast domain name service which is used by grid plug and play to locate profile in the cluster so if you are using profile in the cluster then md nsd will work for that okay and as well as uh, by gns to perform name resolution as we know that you can uh, you can provide the name resolution by two way one is gns and one is dns so that is another interview question if you are using gns it will resolve the name if you are using dns it will resolve the name clear gns is oracle property and dns is os property clear now come to asm uh, sorry evmd event management uh, daemon is a background process uh, that basically publish the event between the nodes okay that basically oracle cluster where creates and asm provide disk management uh, and uh, for oracle cluster layer and oracle database and gpnpd grid plug and play domain provides across access to the grid uh, plug and play profile and coordinate updates to the profile between the node of the cluster to ensure that all the nodes have the most recent profile so that profile we will discuss later on so this is the cluster where startup sequence so if you want to remember you just remember that first process is init init process will start ohasd ohasd process will start cssd agent or a root agent or a agent and cssd monitor and cssd agent will start ocssd also okay then come to or a root agent we will start ocsmond or logard crsd discmon acfs driver oct ssd then aura root agent again it started sorry crsd of aura root agent will start aura root agent and aura agent and aura root agent will start uh, node vip scan vip network gns vip and aura agent of crsd will work for ons asm instance scan listener node listener disk database instance then come back to first level aura agent of ohasd is responsible for GIPCD, MDNSD, EVMD, ASM, and GPNPD. So, like this way, I remember. So, you can uh, do the same thing, or otherwise, you can do your learning style. Okay. Clear, boss? Yes, sir, it's clear. But uh, one thing, if it is uh, configured on Windows, which is the service instead of Unit, uh, which service it is going to start? Uh, Windows, I never work for Rack, uh, so I can't tell you right now. But later on, I can find out and then I can give the answer. Fine. Any other questions from you guys? I just now no. Okay, thanks, Neil. So, controlling Oracle cluster where, so as we know that CRSTL utility and SRVCTL is utility available. So, CRS utility is used to invoke a certain OHASD function. Like if you want to start or stop cluster where on local node, then you can fire CRST, CTL startup cluster and stop cluster. And if you want to start cluster where on all nodes, then you need to use keyword hyphen all. Okay. And if you want to enable or disable uh, Oracle cluster where, then you need to disable CRS cluster ready services. So that will basically stop that Oracle cluster where. So CRS CTL, uh, uh, CRS CTL enable CRS or CRS CTL disable CRS. And if you want to check the status of the CRS on the local node, then you can fire CRS CTL check cluster. Okay, so these are the command which you can use uh, for uh, Oracle cluster where clear. Okay. 
so whenever uh, one, my, my one question when a node that contains oracle grid infrastructure so whenever you are started ohasd uh, will start automatically by init process or you need to start tell me it's automatically it will yes absolutely correct so whenever you are using crs ctl utility to disable crs uh, services from starting state information that is related to startup is placed in the uh, uh, S uh, slcs underscore srs uh, sorry src control file which preventing automatic startup on machine reboot so this uh, uh, parameter or attribute is important so if suppose uh, you want to locate uh, ohasdtr uh, basically uh, sorry crss start file on a normal running uh, cluster node so you you can find out uh, under etc oracle scls underscore scr then host name then root and then you will get ohasdstr file okay so in that you will get it is enabled okay so when you are disabling crs CTL, disable crs so you will get the message crs 4621 oha uh, s automatically uh, auto start is disabled so if you uh, if you again check this file crss start file it will choose disable entry okay so this file is very important i hope you know that or you are listening first time that file name is C, my God, CRS, and then start. So remember this this way. So this is the file which contains enable and disable. Okay, please mute the uh, your audio. Professional, don't take it seriously, the trainer. But boss, I am also a DBA. So I am the same guy as you. Okay. So at least listen carefully by whatever I'm excuse me. Whatever what I am saying. Because professional never give the respect to the trainer <laughs> that I had experience from last 20 years. Ahmed, one question is there. Uh, what is the difference between uh, CRS ETL check CRS and CRS ETL check cluster? Is it both the same? CRS check cluster will basically give the status of CRS on particular node. And what other thing you ask? Uh, CRS ETL check CRS. CRS CTL check CRS. Mm. Yes. I'm not sure, but I will check and let you know. Both are, I think, same. Okay. Because uh, I will check and then let you know. Okay. Check CRS. Is there any command? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I uh, I think in 11 G, uh, it it is there. Okay, so this is 12 C actually. So okay. I think sy syntax may be changed. So I will check and mm -hmm. let you know because I can't tell uh, wrong things if I don't know. Okay. okay. Thank you. So uh, that you show that when you say CRS CTL check cluster hyphen all. If you are saying CRS CTL check cluster, it will tell the output of a specific node. If you say CRS CTL check cluster hyphen all, so it will show you three things, cluster ready services, cluster synchronization services, 
and event management these three uh, information will come host wise host one host two host three clear so basically it is verifying the status of oracle cluster here and uh, So if you are firing this command CRS CTL check, so by which uh, owner you can run root or uh, grid? Uh, grid I using grid user only. I think we have to run this. <laughs> See for CRS CTL <laughs> command uh, root. Uh, or user is required, but for check cluster, you can use uh, grid. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, if if uh, CRS TTL check CRS command you ask right. So the overall health of cluster wear on a specific node can be obtained by using the CRS CTL check CRS command. Now you get the difference. This okay. command is for only on the node on which they are executed. Okay. And to check the uh, uh, CSS across all nodes, then you need to use the CRS CTL check cluster. Now this is the difference. Now you got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So C, uh, if you are using uh, CRS CTL check CRS, uh, it will give node wise. If you are using CRS CTL check cluster, it will give you all, all node. Now there is a high availability services stack that is CRS CTL stat res and hyphen in it hyphen T. So it will uh, display all the name of the, the processes and target state server uh, state details and uh, like that. So this is the uh, one command by that you can get all the high availability services stack. Clear? Uh, M, what is name of you, uh, Mr. M? Because he is saying CRS CTL check CRS gives one more information about OHASD. Okay, so that's it for today because I want to uh, specifically give this session for clusterware startup because many DBA has uh, too much confusion in that. So that's why I had taken uh, separately. So if you see my previous slide, uh, that is, so please remember this and boss who has asked this window process services. So these are the things. Okay. So you can remember this table. Uh, who is yeah, the yeah. owner? Then root R yeah. extension for root. And if, if you if it is does not any mention, so that may be grid or Oracle, whatever you are configured for Oracle software owner. Okay. And related to Windows processes, that name is as called as dot exe. Okay. So these are the component which is very important. PRS, CSS, CTSS, PVM, GIPC, GNS, grid plug and play, logger, master, dismount, MDNS. Uh, Oracle agent, OHAS, ONS, Oracle root agent, and Sysmon. Yeah. So please remember this uh, customer component and services table. Abhishek, sir, why Oracle come with stack? <laughs> See, to manage easily, to divide the things uh, in terms of lower stack and uh, upper stack so that uh, they can differentiate the task 
that maybe that is the thing. Okay. So thank you for joining this session. I am stopping, and in next session I will take about uh, from GPNP and another thing. Okay. Thanks, sir.